TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me. If we do go live and you miss it, better go to twitch.com. Type in that username right there. All alive, save. You can watch them, fast forward them, go to exactly parts you want to go to. Don't forget we do got merch, man. You get me? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just, I'm almost done with that cough, man. And we do got Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. We are caught up on here. We dropped a bodyguard today at some point. Uh, the link to all of that is down in the description below. But this is Talk TV Investigates. Oh, hit that little like button for me, man. This is the Molly Boys, how London's most feared gang run drugs. Guns and violence across the capital. Talk to me. Our top story today, a 15-year-old girl has been stabbed to death in the rush hour in South London. Two teenagers have been sentenced to life in prison at Leeds Crown Court uh, for the murder of a 15-year-old boy. A 21-year-old man who was stabbed to death at the Notting Hill Carnival has been named today by his manager as rapper Takayo Nambard. They are weapons that kill, that can't be bought in shops. So why is it so easy to buy zombie knives online? They're finding knives just like this. But because there is no writing on the knives, the police can do nothing. As the politicians keep talking, teenagers and others keep dying. That is Wait, the... Wait, what? Because there's no writing on it? Reality. What would your day look like when you come out to go to the shop? Young people can't even go to the shop. I've got some young people, they've got to get to a cab to just go to the corner shop. They cannot walk anywhere. They cannot get in a tube. They cannot get on a bus. Hey, that's how Chicago was. The last neighborhood I lived in, boy, I was not walking nowhere. That 30 had to be on me. <laughs> Block 17, 30, beam, had to be on me. I'm not playing with them. <laughs> I'm not my bad. I'm not, I'm not glorifying it at all, but like I'm, I need my safety in my life. I value it. And these other people in that neighborhood did not value life at all. And it was nothing that I could say or do about it. Oh, yes, I am a Christian man, but like at the same time, I'm using wisdom. I'm walking with it. I don't care. I'm walking with God and I'm walking with this 30. They go hand in hand. You play with me. I'm going to be wise about it and send you up there. Don't play, I promise. <laughs> no way by themselves. Allegedly. Because they will get killed on sight by another child. These are zombie knives. There's, the chances of survival is very, very slim. These are people that are not emotionally disciplined to be killing people for what reason? It's a fact. Crime crime is plaguing London and it's on the rise with an increase of over 1,500 knife crime incidents this year compared to the last. And the Marley Boys, sometimes labelled as London's most violent and organised gang, are often at the forefront of headlines. The gang which operates in East London has been accused... And this is a very informative platform and a very informative... 13 minutes, but y'all know what y'all did to their ecos when y'all dropped this on them? Through the roof. They the man now. And you right here, you, this, you should be like on a runway or something. Anyway, continue. Most of grooming and exploiting young children, controlling drug trade in the area and using violent weapons such as zombie knives. And some of their actions make the hit series Stop Boy look tame. Zombie knives. Bro got on a machete but can't afford new shoes. And some of their actions make the hit series Stop Boy look tame. Shut up, beef. Stop! Hey, you get back. You're not doing what this smoke. I just told you that. But who are they really? And why are they gaining notoriety at such a fast pace? The fact that they put that clip in there is wild. Sixteen of the 80 homicides in the capital so far this year have been teenagers. Last year, 99 young people under 25 were murdered with a knife or sharp object in the 12 months to March 2022. 13 of those were aged under 16. One of the most prominent and reportedly business-driven gangs in London is the Marley Boys, based in Walthamstow and Leighton. According to Trident, they're responsible for seven murders in three years or less. 
that we know of. News outlets tend to paint them as a small group of young people who have fled war-torn Somalia and settled in the UK. But through investigating further, we have found that the group is ethnically diverse. There are over 200 people of a wide range of ages associated with the group. This is Valentin Road in London's Walthamstow. It's been called the UK's most dangerous street and some say it's run by the Mali boys. The notorious gang have been associated with crimes from murder to arson and sex attacks. The latest alleged ringleader, who is Hamza Ohak, is currently serving life behind bars for double murder. Earlier this year, received a second jail term for at least 36 years for a fatal stabbing. Both killings were in revenge over a fatal attack on a fellow Mali boy gang member, Elijah Donnelly. But the group itself are still at large and have become a prominent feature in the UK drill music, operating under the name The Mali Strip. But while the music seems to glorify a violent lifestyle and... All the artists is locked up though, ain't they? Or the ones that, the main ones at least, right? Trivialized fatal crime. A lot of members say that characterization is <coughs> and many of them want to get out, but can't. And don't All lay members, period. Don't know how. Three quarters of the boroughs in London with the highest levels of violent offending are also in the top 10 most deprived. Those same areas also have higher proportions of children under 20 living in poverty than the London average. Ricardo and Jesse are in a volunteer-run media project in a Waltham Forest gang territory. The project was started by a man who knows everything about gangs. He's written a book about them. In fact, it's his own story. He was a notorious gangster. Divine is an entrepreneur and writer who runs the knife crime charity Kiss for Life. He grew up in Walthamstow and became a key oh, okay. player in the gang violence there. He even went to school with some of the Mali boys. He spoke to us about why so many people who are young are becoming involved in conflict. I was about 13 when I originally got involved in um, a downward spiral or a dark, the, the gang life, if you'd put it in that way. What sort of led me down that road are many different factors. A lack of self-discipline um, in terms of my own personal accountability for that. But um, in terms of a bigger picture, 13. Um, it was the influences no dad, around me. Probably. Um, that sort of led me down that road. I was um, born in the UK, moved to Ghana when I was two. I came back when I was seven. And when I came, the environment was completely um, a different environment <coughs> in terms of, um, you know, trying to create a self-belief. Self um, we was in an environment where a lot of young people, um, you could just be bullied or you can be picked on just by um, being a certain, like not being in an in crowd or something like that. And then when you realize that you're fed and people um, sort of do as you say, you realize you can then capitalize of that and go into things that can make you money. And doing that, you realize you're now spiraling into a very um, aggressive, um, violent road. So I wanted cars, I wanted jewelry, I wanted. Mm. It's tough. They don't even handcuff you in the UK. They're like, man, go get in the car, bro. Violent road. So I wanted cars, I wanted jewelry, I wanted all these things because I believed it's going to make me feel valued. And when I realized after going through that journey and having all these things, I still did not feel like I was a valuable person to society because I'd go into certain environments. Some of my friends, I'd go to school, colleges, universities. And I think that the minute I realized my self-value, everything around me just like, it just it's just like being in a toxic relationship and you wake up one day and said, enough is enough. Wow, this is wow. Not for Not 100%. Man. Imagine 13 year old kid, you live in an area like Tottenham, yeah? And you, you go to a school that's quite close to Wood Green. And Wood Green has a lot of conflicts with Tottenham. So just the fact that you're going to school and you're from that area, automatically, they you can just be seen as an enemy just by default. Being able to protect yourself and saying I'm going to get a knife. As That's how I be in Chicago, man. When you a certain color, you'll be an enemy by default. Like certain, certain, you know, certain Hispanic gangs, and they they they, they have they into it with African American gangs. But when you see that color, like you automatically on go, 
or when a lot of the schools got shut down in Chicago, then this side of the town school had to go to a different school that had these members over there and they had to cut through this town. Like, it's dangerous going to school. 7 a.m. in the morning, I'm trying to get to school. It's dangerous out here. As much as it sounds very crazy, cannot be the, the most baddest idea. Now, people carrying knives, it now puts you in a position where you can easily become the perpetrator. I've seen in a lot of the work I do in colleges and universities all across England with my organization, Kiss for Life, we've realized there's a lot of people that ended up in issues that they became the ones uh, uh, stabbing or killing someone, but essentially they saw themselves as um, a victim and having to carry a knife was a way to protect themselves. Just carrying a knife to protect yourself because of the environment you're in, even though you didn't want to, you felt it was the right choice to do, now you're in a position where you've ended up stabbing up someone because you're angry, you know what I mean? And it happens... Nah, yeah. That's how it be in Chicago. A lot of people are carrying pipes just because they have to. Not because they want to, but like, it's so dangerous in certain areas, you got to. But the difference in America is, well, you can get self-defense if everything look right. Actually, every single day, it's a recipe for disaster. And then back to the selling drugs, for example, like the Marley Boys and everything else. If you're in like in America, uh, Chicago specifically, if I have any, a, a firearm that I'm not supposed to have, and somebody comes up to me and initiates something, and I fire on them out of self-defense, I'm not gonna go to jail for him. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna beat that, but I'm gonna go to jail for having a pipe though. That's the only charge I'm gonna have. Unauthorized use of a firearm, which is what five years probably get out in two. Two and a half, three, we take those. I'm alive. <laughs> environment where, you know, financially, That's the mindset. everyone around you is struggling and you have no money and people are able to give you um, a, a, a job or a platform where you could be earning 500 pound at the age of 13 to 16. Again, it doesn't seem like the most craziest idea. A lot of these young people are, tr are going through traumatic situations. They are just literally mentally disturbed and challenged just from the upbringing coming up. It's far uh, 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 easier for a lot of young people to end up in an environment they didn't even want to be in. Now, the average young person carries a knife that goes from their, their knee to their waist, like this big. These are zombie knives. There's the chances of survival Minimal. is very, very slim. These like, what is this? They found this on somebody? This is a ninja set of... <laughs> Like you hit somebody with this, like what? Like what is it? Okay. These are huge. They're killing, killing tools. They, they, you can't have a Rambo knife for any other reason than to kill someone. Colin James started Gangs Unite CIC with the hopes of reducing gang violence in the area. His initiative, Street Fathers, looks to provide people on the streets with a father. Is it me? She looking dead in the camera, seductively? My bad. ...and a place to stay if they're in need, offering options to people who perhaps feel trapped. I find a lot of young people, when they come out of prison, there is nothing for them. And these young people don't really want to learn a trade now, so they tend to drift in and out. I said, we, we, we never call them gangs. Yeah. We call them man them, we call them firms, we call them crews. Where I grew up, I grew up in an estate, there's probably 120 children in there. So we was never labelled as, as a gang. We named ourselves crews or firms. It's the government that gave the children the label gangs. All we had was our name and our reputation. And I would have done anything to keep that. See, I, I think prevention is the most important aspect of working with young people, especially in youth crime. The government deals with intervention and they... You gotta give kids, young kids, something to do. Let them see that there's something else out there fun intervention but intervention is too late channel, something's already channel happened that someone's, already been, stabbed. someone's already been hurt someone's already become a victim see in inherently inherently is a strong word i don't think anyone is naturally violent there is probably a few probably five percent of the the world population is probably that way i think experiences and it's all circumstantial see see most people the reason why i believe most people go on the road is economical they believe it's for money and everybody goes out there and thinks it's an easy way of making money. But as we were talking about earlier on, it's societal. 
Everybody wants to find their place in life, especially young people. We all do. We all want to find out who our friends are, what peer groups do we belong to. Some strive for higher peer groups. And to get into those higher prayer groups now, you've got to do certain things and you've got to be a certain way. And you've got to be either that man or that specific female to get in those specific circles now. You know, people think that young people are being groomed and they always use this word groom, groom, groom. Facts, right? What it's you, just naive. What you got to say about this? Hold on. And they always use this word groom, groom, groom. It's just naive and vulnerable young people that want to do these things because they want to fit in, they want to impress, they want to be a part. Do you feel like Wolfram Stowe has become unsafe, as some people say? Could agree. And Wolfram Stowe is, is just like any other area. Every area is safe until young people are there. It's unsafe and it's only dangerous for young people. But when a 14-year-old boy like Jaden gets killed, it's nothing. He got killed in a mistaken identity. Um, he got on a motorbike which belonged to somebody else and someone else must have done something on the motorbike unbeknown to him. And some people was looking for someone on that motorbike. They saw him, he's got a crash helmet on. They drove up to him, knocked him off the motorbike and stabbed him nine times. Well, if I had my, if it was down to me, once you get caught with a gun and knife, I'd put you in the army since you want to be a murderer and since you want to use weapons. I think that they, they need to be more harsher with the kind of penalties that they're giving for carrying those type of knives. I call them weapons of mass destruction because that's what they cause. That's great, yeah. I, I said, once you go in a gang or you go on the road or you choose to do certain things, you take your whole family with you anyway. And the way that it deals with now, if I can't get you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your sister, I'm going to get your brother, I'm going to get your mum. And this is, that is how, how they're is. thinking. So once you decide to go on the road, and get ups and energy. Everybody's taking involved. your whole family with you. And they just don't understand that. Professor Andrew Whittaker of London South Bank University, who wrote a report focusing on gang conflicts in the area, said. Since 2010, more than 4,500 youth work jobs have been cut in 760 youth centres. Since 2010, more than 4,500 youth work jobs have been cut and 760 youth centres have closed. So, does our government need to do more for young people? And could we ever see our streets without gang violence? I'm muted, my bad. The answer, like I said, to their questions, her question, yes, and her question, no. I mean, y'all cut all those youth jobs, y'all not really giving nobody no choice. So when we out here broke, can't get a job, but we trying, and then it's like, oh man, let me, here's an opportunity. My mom is hungry, I'm hungry, we're about to lose our house, let me do something. Tell her, live it like common, man, I'm gone.